In this video, I will show you how to use SPSS to do a one sample hypothesis test on the population mean and also construct a confidence interval on the population mean. A couple real quick things just recall when you're bringing data into SPSS, one of the first things that you should do is you should go in, you should set up variable view and you would do that by clicking on this bottom tab just to make sure that you have the right level of measurement and then all the other settings in there. So in order to do the one sample hypothesis test, which is what we're going to start with, you're going to go to the analyze menu and then you're going to go down to compare means and then we'll choose the one sample t-test. When we choose that, that opens up a new dialog box for our one sample t-test and we want to select our, our variable that we're testing against, which is the, the fecal coliform count in this case. And then we want to change our test value to, zero, or to 200 and that's what we're going to test against in this example right here. So whatever that hypothesized value, that mu sub zero value that you're testing against, that's, that's what goes there. When you're all done, you're going to click OK, and this will open up the output viewer. And you'll notice in the output viewer, it gives us the one sample statistics. So it gives us the number of data points we have, the mean, the standard deviation, and then the standard error of the mean. And then right below that, it gives us the results for the one sample t-test. So it's saying we're testing, or our test value is 200, and that's what we're testing against. So it calculates our test statistic right here, the T value, and I call that T star in class. These are our degrees of freedom, which are 99. And then our, uh, our P value is the significance for two tail. Now one thing with SPSS is it always does a two tail test. So if you're doing a one tail test, you're going to have to divide this value in half to get your correct P value. If you're doing a two tail test, then this value is appropriate to use, okay? So those would be our correct values for our hypothesis test. Now with our confidence interval, we don't come up with the correct values for that because notice this says mean difference and then it says 95% confidence interval of the mean difference. What it's essentially doing is it's taking this value of 200 and subtracting that from our sample mean and that's where this mean difference comes from. And then it's adding and subtracting the margin of error from that to and from that mean, mean difference and it's coming up with the upper and lower bound. So these values don't really make sense because we come up with negative values. So when we do confidence intervals, there's something that we need to change in the one sample test. So let's go back and take a look at this. So this time we're going to go to analyze. We're going to go down to compare means again and then one sample test statistic. I'm going to click reset to clear everything out of here. So the test variable that we're going to look at is still fecal coliform count, but this time I'm going to leave the test value at zero. So when we do confidence intervals, we want that to be zero. And then up here under the options, this is where we're going to set our confidence interval percentage. And I'm going to leave this at 95% so we can compare the two tables, but if you're doing a 90% confidence interval, you would change that to 90 here. Or a 99% confidence interval, you would change that to 99 here. So then we'll go ahead and we'll click continue and then OK and that'll generate the output. You'll notice that my table for my summary statistics are exactly the same as what was previously presented in the example above. So I still have a sample size of 100, my mean is 131.67, my standard deviation is 119.661 and my standard error of the mean is 11.966. Below that, in our, in our output for our, uh, test or our hypothesis test, you'll notice that it says the test value is zero. And now it's giving us a mean difference of 131.670. So notice that that's the same as our mean value. So it's taking this value right here that it's saying is the mean difference and adding and subtracting the margin of error to that value right there. And so that generates our lower bound and our upper bound. So these would be the correct lower bound and upper bound for our 95% confidence interval for the population mean. So the big takeaway with this is when you're doing hypothesis testing, you're going to put in a test value, your hypothesized value, that mu sub zero value, in for your test value. When you're doing a confidence interval, that test value needs to be zero if you want the correct confidence interval, okay? So hopefully this gives you enough information to do hypothesis testing and confidence intervals.